All right, guys, you are about to see the Saturday morning teaching that took place at the To Love and To Be Loved conference. Now, one of the best ways for me to teach and train people is by demonstration. And we learn this from Jesus himself when he doesn't just give information to his disciples about healing and discipleship, about what the kingdom of heaven is like, but rather he also says, now let me demonstrate for this for you. And then we know he also goes on and he lays hands on them and says, now you go and do it. So this is just kind of um, a practice that I have adopted based on what I see Jesus doing where I feel it is best to teach and train people actually by demonstration. So this is what you are about to watch. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pencil, sit in the spirit, whatever you need to do, be empowered to minister to each other. Um, I typically start these out on Saturday mornings by doing a little bit of a prayer demonstration. Have any of you guys done my devotionals on version? Read my book, Enforcing Prayer. Um, in a lot of my books I do where you have, hi, uh, woman of God. Um, in, in all of my books, I do um, a lot of demonstrating of how do you take a passage of scripture, how do you declare that passage of scripture, and then how do you reconcile that, which is a lot of the pattern that we're talking about this weekend. Last night, we talked about falling in love with God and cultivating a honeymoon passion with God, living in that honeymoon, recognizing that the power of God's love to reconcile anything in any circumstance Today, after worship, they're going to be, um, I'm going to be doing a little bit more nuts and boltsy, just kind of teaching and training a little bit more on healthy relationships, and then we're going to be talking about falling in love with you. But in all of these concepts, one of the key things is, and this sounds so cliche, but I'm saying it because we need to hear it, is we need to have a knowledge and an understanding of what it looks like to use the scriptures as a weapon of warfare in your life. We all are very interested in learning how to prophesy over people. We're all very interested in learning how to pray for people. But until you learn to use the scriptures as a weapon of warfare in your own life, you will not be nearly as effective in using the scriptures as a weapon of warfare in the lives of other people. How many of you have been to some of my house meetings? In the house meetings, I do a lot of teaching and training and talking about while I'm ministering to somebody, I'm kind of sharing with people what's going, giving you the inside edition. And sometimes I'll say, look, I'm not making up something to pray. She's getting hit with laughter. And I know that the Bible says that laughter healeth the body. So I can therefore then stand in agreement with what I see and what I sense the Holy Spirit doing in that person's life. Why? Because I know what the scripture says. So not to sound cliche, but you're going to hear me talking over and over again today about the power of of the word. So we're going to start this morning with a demonstration. I don't plan demonstrations. I don't really plan anything, I don't think. <laughs> He's like, you plan nothing. I'm always like, you, Kenneth. He's like, okay. Um, hey, give it up for Kenneth and Courtney and their team. <clears throat> they did a phenomenal job last night, and I, I told you guys we switched up the uh, kind of the format last night, and I called Kenneth probably about four or five weeks ago, and I was looking at the schedule, and I was like, I really think the Lord wants me to just start with no worship, which doesn't really make any sense when you think about the pattern of the tabernacle and going through the outer court, the inner court, coming into the Holy of Holies. But one of the things that I uh, love about Kenneth and Courtney and their team is the ability to usher you into the Holy of Holies. And I was like, man, I really want to give them the opportunity to linger there. And so I was like, wh- and so I felt like the Lord was like, okay, then flip it up. You know, you, you teach first, release the word, and then release an atmosphere where the word can work. And I feel... Uh, and I told you, I shared with you guys last night, it was unnerving, because I was like, I'm not, I'm not ready, you know? Like, I need that worship to get my heart ready, but, man, what a powerful um, opportunity that the Lord gave us last night, and that's the power of obedience, when you just don't ask questions and are will- willing to do things differently than you've ever done them before. All right, somebody throw out a stronghold for me. Fear. All right, so it's important that we have an understanding of what the Scripture says about fear. Last night, we talked about how perfect love casts out all fear. So I'm going to declare, God, your word says that your perfect love casts out all fear. And God, I confess right now, I repent to you that I feel a fear, I sense fear coming at me. And so God, I receive your love right now. I declare, God, that even as your love is coming upon me, that there's a divine exchange happening within me, that fear is being cast out even as I come into an agreement. God, I shift my mind and I declare I am loved. 
God, I shift my heart and I agree I am love. I break every contention off my heart and off my mind that would disagree with the message of love. I choose, come on, I don't feel, I don't live by feel, I live by faith. I choose, God, your love for me, and I declare that even as I come into your love, that fear is leaving my body in the name of Jesus. Yes. Amen. Awesome one. What else? Pain. Who said pain? Awesome. I don't think I've ever had pain spoken before. God, your word says that you have given me the ability, that you have set me free from everything that constrains me. You say that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty and there is freedom. And pain inhibits me. And so I break the lie of pain. I tell you, you're not welcome in my body because God says that the spirit resides in my body and where the spirit of the Lord is freedom. So I break off the captivity of pain. I tell you that you are a lie and you are not welcome in my body. I break my agreement with pain. I, break, I repent of every moment I've agreed and allowed pain to navigate my life when God says he's given me the guidance, the illumination of the Holy Spirit, that I can be guided, I can be navigated by your word, by your love, by your freedom. And so today I change my mind that I'm not filled with pain, but I'm filled with the freedom of the kingdom. All right, what else? Insecurity. Okay. God, your word says, come on, so I'm waiting on the word. I don't want to make up something to pray. I want to stand on the authority that I'm given. Your word says that by the blood of Jesus, there's a confidence and an assurance, a boldness that has come upon me that you even say I can step into the throne room and meet with my maker face to face. And so I declare that insecurity, you're a lie, and you're keeping me from the boldness of the kingdom. Your word says every place I step, that you've given me that land, that you've given me the ability to be strong and to be courageous. Come on, I'm just speaking John, Joshua chapter 9 now. And so, God, I just thank you, Lord, that, that insecurity is leaving my body right now. Can I just minister to you? Would you come forward, please? Watch how I'm going to shift now. Tammy, come on up. Watch how I'm going to shift. Now, I, because I have had to pray this for myself, anybody in this room ever struggle with insecurity? If you don't raise your hand, you're a liar. But you understand that I said we struggle with it. I am not an insecure person. Why? Because God says I have the boldness and the courage of the kingdom. So I'm not going to declare what I'm feeling. See, the feeler doesn't have to be the feel. Go ahead and raise your hands for me. Nice and easy. So I'm just going to impress, I'm going to impart this word into her. I'm not making up anything to pray. I don't necessarily have to have a prophetic word for her. I just need to know what the word says. I take authority over fear in your life. That would tell you you're not good enough. I take authority over inadequacy, that word that has said you'll never be good enough. I break that lie off of you in the name of Jesus. And I declare that the boldness and the confidence of the kingdom is coming into you right now in Jesus' name. I cast out every spot of insecurity from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Come on, I'm just declaring scripture over her. Now watch how she's coming into an alignment. Right now we're just yanking the soul into an alignment with the spirit. Just like when David said, what is wrong with you, oh my soul? Get in line with the word of God. Get in line with the love of the kingdom. So I lose God's love upon you right now in Jesus' name. That's just the spirit coming on you. She's got you. We just loose it. We loose it. I'm not making anything up for her to pray. Typically, when somebody falls out for me, I just think that, that's the spirit just resonating that word for her, just letting her sit in it. How many of you know we need to just kind of sit in the word sometimes? We just need to let it work. Let the word work in your life. Come on, don't be like, I read my devotional, check, but I didn't sit in the word. I didn't let the word get into me. Come on, there's more than just having the word in you. There's, there's the word getting into you, okay? What else? Father, you say, come on, the two evil twins are guilt, condemnation, three, three evil twins, triplets, guilt, condemnation, and shame. And God, your word says there is therefore now no more condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And with condemnation goes guilt, it goes shame. God, you say that I am enough, that because you were enough, I am enough. And so I break my agreement with shame. I thank you, Father, that every spot of my life, everything in my past has been covered by the blood of Jesus. And I will not hold myself accountable for the things you have let go of. You say, God, that as far as the east is from the west, so far you have removed my transgressions from me and that you do not think upon those things any longer. 
so I break my agreement with the thoughts that would tell me I need to continue to think upon the things I've done wrong. I change my mind right now, God, and I shift my mindset, and I come into an agreement, and I declare, God, that you have done a good thing in me. You have cleansed me. You have purified me. You have filled me with the holiness of the kingdom. Shame you are a lie in Jesus' name. All right. Who else? Thank you. It takes a lot of courage to throw these out there, doesn't it? Are you okay? Do you feel great? If anybody's panicked in the room, we just want you to know. I like to tell people, they're, they're like, and I like to be like, oh, how many of you are like, oh, God, this is that kind of conference. And, I'm, <laughs> and, and then I'm like, oh, and yeah, we've locked all the doors, so you can't get out. But we're going to talk about it, right? The supernatural is weird. We want to serve a supernatural God, but then when it gets too weird, we're like, I'm out, tapping out. And that's when I'm like, oh, I'm all in. Because I, yeah, I don't know about you guys, but I need a supernatural God in my life. I need some supernatural work in my life. I'm tired of working for things on my own strength. I'm tired of trying to muster up my own healing. I'm tired of trying to walk in my own deliverance. I need to walk in a supernatural gifting of the kingdom. It's not just an experience like we talked about last night. You're not just a natural person having a spiritual experience. Spiritual experience is not an event. It's a lifestyle. You're a natural being. You're, you're a spirit, supernatural being that's having natural experiences occasionally. Hopefully less than. <laughs> All right, another one. Who said angry? The Bible tells me that one of the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, tenderness, the kindness of the kingdom. And so, God, I, I confess of my anger. I confess, God, that I have held things accountable to me, things that you let go of on the cross, I've held on to. And I take authority over anger and bitterness, and I release the tenderness, the compassion, the gentleness, and the kindness of the kingdom. God, I declare that kindness is in me. I declare that gentleness is in me. I declare that tenderness is in me, that the compassion of the kingdom is welling up within me even right now. Can I minister to you? Come on forward. So I'm just going to release compassion of the kingdom. The Bible says that when Jesus stepped forward for me just a little bit, the Bible says when, when Jesus looked out into the crowd that there was a compassion that rose up against him, that he was vexed. That word compassion in the Greek, the Spirit's already coming on here. That word compassion in the Greek, that word compassion in the Greek is the idea of your guts being wrenched. There's a pain inside of me. I feel the pain that God feels for that person. And, and compassion is the opposite of anger. The enemy doesn't want us to have compassion because compassion is what begins to move us in the kingdom, right? Jesus was compelled by compassion to feed the multitude. He was compelled by compassion to heal the man. Now you'll notice I didn't even touch her. I just brought her into the space of truth. And as she began to get a revelation of what's true for her, her bell gets a little rung, right? We kind of come into an alignment with the Spirit, and we get overwhelmed. We talked last night about living in the aha of the kingdom, being overwhelmed by His presence, being overwhelmed by His truth. I would be willing to bet that there was a moment that she was like, oh, yes, of course. Compassion is the antidote for anger, and it's already in us. Why? Because Jesus is in us. See, we spend a lot of time praying for what God has already done on the cross right? So we're praying for things. We're army crawling across the victory line. And God says, baby, you're already seated with me in the heavens upon high. I've already positioned you in a position of victory. So stop begging for what I've already done for you. Just step into it. Come into an alignment with it. Step into an agreement. One more. <laughs> they all wanted in on that one. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with anxiety just because I feel like it speaks in here, we know that the Bible says that we can be anxious for nothing, but in everything in prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving of heart, we grant our requests before the Lord, and the peace of God that transcends our understanding. Come on, listen. God, I confess that I try to understand the things that make me anxious. I try to work them out in my mind. I try and reason through all the things that make me anxious, but your word says that there's a thing, that there's a peace, that there's a certain supernatural work, that there's a person that transcends my understanding. So I repent of trying to work out my anxieties instead of just stepping into the supernatural peace of the kingdom. Can I minister to you? Come on forward. So you watch how I know how to minister 
because I've practiced in my closet. There's a reason why I'm quick to, to know these, because I've had to, to cling to these myself. Step forward for me just a little bit. There's, people are like, why do you have people step forward? I'm like, because I don't want them to hit their heads. Or just, <laughs> there's nothing prophetic in that. Just so you know, I'm going to give you all your tips. Put your hands out just like this. I just want you to silence. I want, I want you to pretend like there's nobody else in this room for a moment. Nope, it is, it is, it is hard, but it's easy in the spirit. Because the Bible says that the yoke of the Lord is easy and his burden is light. So I, I take authority over perception, concern, and opinion of man that would keep you, that would keep you from receiving the opinion of God, which says you are whole, you are good enough, that I receive you just as you are, that even on the cross I saw you, even on the cross I knew your name, even on the cross, I was loving you. And if had nobody else been there in that day and that day alone, I would have done it for you. Yes. Because my child, you are worth it. Yes. I see you. My eye is upon you. I have never turned away from you. I hear the Lord say, he is not like man. He does not relent. He does not turn back. And he does not break his promises. He's not just a promise maker for you. He's your promise keeper. And so God, I thank you that even today, God, you're shifting her. You're shifting her. And there's a revelation coming to you, even as I'm praying over this, like, could this possibly be true? Could everything she's saying possibly be true for me? And I hear the Lord say, I'm not just a yes God. I'm a yes and an amen God. When I do things, I do them well. When I do things, I do them completely. I have not short-sighted what I have in mind for you. My arm is not shortened when it comes to you. But I have reached down from the depths and into your darkness and pulled you out pulled you out. So we're going to go back to that anxiety. So Father, I take authority over anxiety right now in the name of Jesus. Now I'm not doing anything magical other than coming into her bubble and standing in agreement with her. The Bible says we're two or three agree. So there the Lord is working. Now I'm not moving her around. That's just the spirit moving her. You'll, you might notice my right kneecap is shaking up and down. That's just the anointing on me. Sometimes I fall out first. <laughs> So I'm just giving her some space here to just kind of settle in, to just settle in, to settle in. And everybody reach your arms out to her. How many of you believe God loves her so much he does not desire for her to live in anxiety? He does not desire for her to live in anxiety. So we just thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You guys did that. I didn't do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys want to do one more? I'm going to change it up on you? Yeah. Oh, okay. Just because my kneecaps are really changing. What? Fatigue. Okay. I'm going to speak about that today, actually. God, you say that we do not grow weary of well-doing, that we have not a spirit of faint-heartedness, but God, you have given us, the Greek word says an energio. In Philippians, it talks about that he's given you the energy to not just do, but to want to do, to will to do the work of God. And so, God, I confess, see, I haven't wanted to do it. I have a fatigue that has fall, fallen upon me, but I am recognizing that that's foul play in my life. And so, God, I take authority. Look at she used to watch her face, how she was like, oh, that's foul play. And I declare that I'm the territory of the kingdom. And I break every trespass of a spirit of fatigue that has come upon me and has tried to tell me I'm too weak, I'm too tired, that I don't have the energy, that my body is broken. And I declare the truth of the kingdom that says, God, you have put an energy in me, an energy that is of the kingdom. I repent and I confess of trying to muster up strength in my own physical strength, in my soul realm, staying awake at night, trying to figure these things out. And God, I declare that even right now, she's like, how does she know this? <laughs> I love watching somebody's face. And I confess, I confess, God, right now I will silence my mind and I'll let you do it. I'll just stand here, Lord, come on forward for me. Come on forward for me. Come on forward. We're just going to release the energy of the kingdom. Anybody else need just the energy of the kingdom? Come on. The energy of the kingdom. If you need it, get it. You can get it right in your own chair. Look, he's not, he is not a, he, he's not a favorite God. We're all his favorites. You understand? Come forward just a little bit for me. Just open up your hands nice and big. And I just want you to feel just the immense energy of the kingdom. Just beginning to restore every part of your physical being from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. We just loose that energy of kingdom. That's just the energy. The Bible talks about the fire of God. 
the fire of God that is from within us, that comes by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for the rushing waters, the energy that comes from the Holy Ghost within us. We thank you, Lord, that we're not finding energy anymore around us, but the energy is within us. Come on, it's within us because the kingdom is within us. The kingdom is ever moving. Come on, God doesn't wear out. He says, while you're sleeping, while you're sleeping, Psalm 121, while you're sleeping, my eye is upon you. I do not sleep, nor do I slumber, but my eye is ever upon you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. I'm going to say one more thing, and then I'm, I'm, we're going to enter into worship, and then we're going to do some teaching. Um, last night, we talked about the atmosphere being such that God was going to be releasing new spiritual languages for people in the room. Did anybody get to speak in a spiritual language for the first time last night? Anybody? Okay, that's right. But what I want to tell you is, when we talked about ministering to God, and I know some people, um, the Lord puts me in unique um, places where a lot of times people are coming out of a denomination where they don't believe in speaking in tongues, or there's that, that thought process of like, we can't speak in tongues in here because there's not an interpretation. But if you remember, we talked last night about how we're ministering to the Lord. And in, in, in 1 Corinthians 14, I believe it's verse 4, it talks about how one who speaks in tongues seeks to edify and encourage and lift himself up. It distinguishes between a prophetic word where you're speaking to a person, to a, another person, versus where you're allowing the Spirit of the Lord to encourage you. And I really believe that the enemy has muzzled the kingdom, has muted the gift of tongues because he does not want us to walk in the encouragement of the kingdom. Come on, look it up. 1 Corinthians 14, I believe it's chapter verse 4. He does not want us. So when we're, we're, we're speaking in a prayer, prayer language, I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to, when we're speaking in a prayer language, the Spirit is ever interceding on our behalf and we're edifying and we're encouraging ourselves. And religion would tell us that's arrogant, it's prideful, it's haughty, that our work is to be ministering to people. But this weekend we're learning that our work is to be ministering to God first, to be ministering to ourselves first, and the overflow, the overflow is what people catch. So I'm going to speak in a prayer language because the Bible says I can and I should and it's useful for the edification. It's useful for the edification. So if you hear me praying in tongues, be reminded that I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to God and he's talking to me. Take it on. 